All right, guys, the time has finally come. We are building our S2000. If you haven't been following along, it's in the playlist, but this is a 2008 S2000. We bought it with around 18,000 miles on it, 100% stock, with the intention to do a build that, like all of our builds, is 100% reversible. Nothing is a permanent change. It would go right back the way before it was touched. So to bring you up to speed, what we've done with this car up to this point, FX300 and lightweight flywheel, that is our favorite clutch package. It has the Skunk 2 Pro ST suspension. We did our brake package and refinished the calipers in a nice bright silver. And then on the cosmetic side, we did a new fresh leather wrapped wheel with red stitching, a red uh, stitched shift boot, and then of course the red seat belts, which is a big a big plus for me. It's something I've always liked on a car. Next thing is, is the turbo build. So let us show you, see what you think about, uh, kind of like my vision, the way I wanted a turbo kit to be and to keep everything super clean and compliant. All right, so the turbo that we're gonna use here is a G25 660D. It's a small frame turbo. We did reverse rotation. That way the compressor is away from the block and also the inlet to the turbine is away from the block too. It gives us a little bit more room to make a shorty manifold. So the idea of this is 400 wheel horsepower to be an OEM plus kind of build. But as you see, this side looks a whole lot bigger and cleaner than the regular twin scroll. Uh, the turbine side should do a good job moving air and controlling boost at the same time. So this should do what we need to do and have a pretty fast spool up. So we should have a decent amount of room here. We're gonna run a three inch downpipe and run it into the cat. That way everything fits and bolts up the way it's supposed to. You see our flange right here. We're gonna make a flange to go right to that. I don't think this is gonna be a turbo kit we're gonna produce. I don't know yet, we'll just see how much work goes into it. it. Might be something we'll offer as a build and install kind of kit. Not something that we're gonna sell and put in a box and ship it. That's never been something we've done. I don't think it's gonna happen this time. We're thinking of keeping this more on the OEM Plus side. So intercooler, we haven't put it in yet, but I'm thinking of building the intercooler to go in there and then how to cut it black so that it doesn't really look like anything's changed. Same with the piping, we've got some ideas with the pipes. We'll show you that when we go down, but I'm thinking the same thing, kind of like a textured wrinkled black finish. So it has a really clean, almost stock look. Look at the room we have on the inner fender right there. We've got the factory mount in there. Uh, start of the downpipe. Full three inch with a V-bend. We're gonna directly run into that cap. So there is a number of catalytic converters available for the S2000. Uh, the factory cat, in my opinion, is still the best, but it is very restrictive. Everyone sells an aftermarket cat that I think is all made by the same people. It has a little tiny bullet in the middle and a pipe on each end. Never seems to really work and most of them fall apart. This is a GSI cat. We buy this through Tycon Stainless Brothers. Uh, this is a three inch, but Past experience, we found that this comes uh, restrictive about 350 horsepower. It will make more power, but at the 350 range, if you drop the cat, put a straight through pipe, 
we've noticed about 25 to 30 horsepower gain immediately, which tells you this is holding it back. We haven't actually put a pressure sensor before it to kind of verify that, but we know the cat was holding back. So I want to keep cats on cars, not just to be compliant and keep everybody happy, but for the smell factor and the nice car factor. There's nothing worse than having a nice car that smells like rotten eggs and uh, burnt oil and everybody hates driving behind you. So my idea, and again, this is just kind of a vision, not sure if it's going to work. I'm sharing it with you. You kind of going along for the ride. Uh, the idea is to run two of these side by side. Uh, run two and a half side by side which is going to give us a total airflow of five inches which based on pipe diameter and uh, certain engineers i've talked to they tell me two pipes will flow better than one i.e if you have a three inch pipe and you split it into two one and a half inch pipes the theory is the two one and a half inch pipes will flow more than a single three i don't know how that works but they tell me it does so two two and a halves should flow quite a bit more than a single three but who knows? I'm going to test it and I'll let you know. And if it doesn't work, we'll both learn together. So this is my idea. This is what we did. Tank top. For it's girls. a tank top. Yes. So we're going to see, but we have some other winter stuff still coming. I know we're a little late. No, the shipping people are late. But that's okay. Yeah. There you go. Classic blue are back. If you've been asking about it, classic blue is black. This is a teaser shirt. We do have the other ones coming any day now, but for right now, we are going to be folding these, putting them back in the store. In our nice new boxes. Look nice these. new boxes. Look, look, fit perfectly right on the shelf. We're so organized. Only took Esther about three attempts to get those because the first ones were about a quarter of an inch too big. That's because their measurements were off online. <laughs> Don't talk to me about it. But yeah, we're getting organized. We're looking good. Our shirt's going to stay nice and clean. All right, so I'm working a little late, making some changes to the S2000. Uh, past video I showed you where we had the oil cooler here. Uh, problem is the intercooler had to be further forward than I like, which means you got to cut the grill. Uh, typically S2000s, I don't like cutting the grill. I don't like cutting the grill on any car. Um, so when this was out here, the hose had to come around the dryer. So I decided to change it. So all this is back the way it was. Uh, the oil cooler is up in this corner right here. Now this isn't going to be a track car, but if you were to track, uh, we've built plenty of race cars with the inner cooler or the oil cooler here, and you can cut some area in the bumper to force air in here. This is basically just going to radiate heat. There is going to be air available around here. Uh, done this many times over the years and it doesn't have a problem staying cool So we've got plenty of room now for our inner cooler to sit here our pipe to come around here uh, Plenty of access for our oil filter as I showed you uh, we, Again, we used to do this a lot back in the day and it really makes changing the oil easy super accessible and of course by adding this aluminum structure it helps cool oil too the plastic here because I had to play with the intercooler, I ended up cutting different holes. Uh, you see it right there, which I hate that. We have an exact calculation. We like to drill the hole here and the pipe sit out perfect. So I do have a new one of those. Uh, just to point out, one thing we're a big believer of is using existing holes. Like we use these holes here for that first oil cooler bracket. Same again here, we're picking up a hole here and a bracket over here. Don't like to drill cars, don't like to add holes, we just like to use existing holes. So let me get that inner cooler marked and then get that on. Next thing will be to start building piping. So it is 9.02 and I was just looking at some of the comments from the video that just went up tonight. Uh, that one, it's got a red car on the cover, but it's actually a black car that we did just before Christmas. 
Anyway guys, thank you for the comments. For some reason it keeps doing the mid-roll ads and the before the video ads, which that's not my fault. I try and click off that. I guarantee you're losing money and YouTube keeps clicking it on. So sorry about that. The worst thing is, is when you click on a video and you gotta watch like, you know, eight minutes of ads, and then, you know, by the time you get to the video, you don't really wanna watch it. It's cold today, by the way, or cold tonight, it's nine. 904 now. So I just disabled those mid-roll ads and uh, pre-ad or whatever the call is. So uh, if you guys bash me for too many ads, it's not my fault. YouTube just keeps doing it. I'm not gonna show you under here. So I'm going home now, the battery light is flashing. Uh, I'm already cold, I got my sweater on, but I'm still cold. And we'll get back on this tomorrow. I think I might work a little late tomorrow and try and get the other piping done. All right, so we have our downpipe braced, our double cat right there. Going into titanium, we have our helm hose resonator in the factory position, the same dimensions, a three inch coming back here and split and so we have a dedicated three inch here into our valve section and then we have a branch off of a 2.5 this is actually a decent merge right here it's cut all the way out so it will move enough airflow but of course it's going to go to a dedicated three inch when it goes into boost once that valve opens it's boost activated right there so this is the cringe part you ready we have this beautiful titanium but I'm still into the OEM Plus, so we're gonna have those mufflers ceramic coated black. That's the cringe part. So there it is. It's a titanium exhaust. We're gonna refinish in black, but that way it gives it that OEM Plus look. Exhaust is back. Now, I hate to cover up the Tycon name, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the screen because I kind of took their name away, and it's such a beautiful. Uh, material to work with. Now it's got that OEM stealthy look. Uh, that valve is black. I don't know if it's coming out. I'm right in the sun here. Uh, the tip is silver so it kind of looks balanced. Obviously the tip is shorter but we wanted it to kind of look uniform but more for the OEM plus look. Kind of like the OEM luff, uh, mufflers that my idea is here. So let's get it on the car. We'll see what it looks. With our inline regulator here, we can set the pressure and find out exactly what PSI the valve opens. So we've got the hose laid out, it's connected to the valve. So basically, is it in for more pressure? Yeah, yeah okay, so you see right there we set 20. Okay, so we'll see where it opens and then then no, uh, it's not like we can change it, but <laughs> at least <laughs> we'll know. At least we'll know. See if this thing will come off. Probably not. Only if you don't want it to come off, then yeah, it'll fire yeah, off across the room and you'll never find it. So if you want to kind of what is that? Press it a couple of times, let it off and we'll see if that valve opens. Oh, it's only plugged back there. Okay. Okay, so that's at like 10 pounds. So it's working for sure. It's kind of hard to see. You can't see how much that's moving. Let me go back there and take a look. Is it open all the way? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's barely cracking. Yeah. So three pounds of boost is barely cracking the valve. I mean, it opens, but it doesn't really want to open. Yeah. But obviously, when it hits three pounds, or four pounds, it's gonna open. Anything over five pounds, it will crack open. So that's good. It's exactly the way we want it. Uh, let's get a cold startup. Also get a look at this exhaust. Now it's got the stealthier look with the black mufflers. A whole bunch of crap blew out. <laughs> down onto uh boy warms up the yeah, idle drops these 
inside, but we've already got air coming out of the turbo. Uh, the intake is done. We're going to send these pipes out to Austin on Monday. Um, that way, when we test it, it's all looking like it's done. We want to test it and then make sure everything's happy before we produce anything. These lines should be nice and dry. I did move this, so it's good to make sure. In a cool pipe in, I'm gonna go ahead and take that over to AB and do it wrinkle black. I kind of like the wrinkle black look. It's got that stock stealthy OEM plus look, which is kind of what we're going for. It disappears. I don't really want really right a uh, bright pipe in, in here. So a few things. Uh, intake air temp sensor in the pipe and the bluff valve is right here it's going to be actually pointing down so i'm going to be showing you that when we put it back together uh something a little different to what we usually do i think you're going to like it so let's get this over to ab i'll show you when it comes back i had a conversation last week with somebody about the old rc injectors talking about the spray pattern all right so a little bit about the exhaust the whole thing is titanium first off to reduce weight it's less than half the weight of the factory system so the idea is on the driver's side is a dedicated three inch it's a pretty straight through design and then it goes to a valve on the back of the muffler this is a boost activated valve it opens right at four pounds of boost but while it is closed the idea is is it uses the muffler basically as a muffler to resonance the low frequency sound it comes in hits that plate bounces back through the muffler and then it's forced down the other side the other side is two and a half inch so that should reduce the low frequency also being a, a, a smaller diameter pipe and then it passes through that muffler so this is going to open at four psi but it shouldn't restrict it until it gets to upper 300s uh, based on our calculations is the boost valve will open way before 300 and it'll be instantaneous going out to the three inch exhaust but it should remain quiet drone free and pleasant to drive at a boost. That's the idea. Okay, so this idea I had with the airbox actually came to me while at the tail of the dragon laying in bed one night. Crazy enough, uh, that's when the ideas come to me. I wanted it to not only reduce intake temps, but to fill up that area in the engine bay so it looks more normal. It doesn't have a big gap and then a filter sticking out. So this is something we may offer if it works, if it flows enough, the inlet to that box is kind of small one that sits right above the radiator there. I'm not sure if it's going to supply enough air for that filter and the turbo to ingest. If it doesn't, we can always put a hole in the outside of the box to generate a little bit more airflow. That's if it doesn't keep up. Uh, again, I want to test this thing because obviously theories have all kinds of ideas, but I like to see them actually in practice. So this should be pretty cool. I'm kind of excited about it. Right now we just put 1000s in it with one of our tunes that we use. Watch this start up. It starts up like stock, absolutely crisp. Really, really good injectors. We use uh, FIC 1000s and the atomization on the spray pattern makes just such a massive difference. It doesn't bother it at all. Idle is solid. Crisp. So right now it sounds kind of weird because the turbo is open and intake is open. Okay, let's see, I'll show you that in a minute. So it sounds weird. It's got a weird turbo sound, but look how nice that is. Everything is hooked up as normal. O2 is in the cat, it's reading properly, so we've got everything compliant. So the intake is open, so we're getting a weird sound from the intake, and then of course the turbo is completely open. We're not driving it, we're just basically going over the startup tune. That's the whooshing sound you hear. Uh, last thing we need to put on is the uh, actuator uh, boost line, which is kind of like a wastegate, it's an actuator for the flap, and then the factory heat shield. Leave that off until we put the pipes on. Now I talk about the tune because tune is one of the most important things and it's not always about just full power. Uh, tuning on the dyno, believe it or not, it's not that difficult. It's not as wizardry as some people like to think. Once you've got your fuel in check, 
all you're doing is playing with timing. There's not a whole lot of mystery in it. Uh, the braver the tuner, the more timing, the more things you read, the closer to the edge you can get if you want to read the EGTs and plugs and exhaust and, and such. You can get closer to the edge. Uh, it's kind of like how close do you want to get until you fall off. Well, I'm all about drivability. So this is a cold start tune. When I say cold start, it's the next morning. So we'll see. Our temps are all the way down. Let's see how it starts up. It lights off nice, comes right to idle, and it's gonna go through his cold start procedure. Now, I'm not trying to claim to be the best tuner because I tell people I'm not. Go somewhere else. I don't like tuning other people's cars. Uh, tuning is like painting a picture. The more time and detail you put into it, the better the picture will be. So there we go. What about that for a cold start? 65 degrees for overnight temps. Now I'm not bragging because last week it was in the 40s which for us is cold but again you gotta tune it and try it in all temps to make sure it's happy. Uh, next thing is also a hot startup. Uh, that will sometimes give you the most issues uh, the larger the injectors. We're only running 1000s and like I said the FIC injectors are fantastic. Uh, we've used a lot of injectors over the years. Uh, these are probably one of my favorites and we stick to them and use them on pretty much everything. All right, so there is gonna be a part two. When the pipes come back, we'll install those and get this thing ready to tune. I'll share with you our findings and let you know if this is a kit we're gonna produce. If it is, great. If not, we'll tell you what we don't like about it. Maybe offer improvements to this, but it is something I wanna test and be thoroughly excited about before I share it with you. In the meantime, check out the LHT store and we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget, enjoy your cars.